Our opening hymn this morning is for all the saints. We'll sing verse 1, 2, and 4. Please stand. responsive reading this morning is Psalm 146. Please respond in the bold print. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all my soul. I will, I will praise, praise the Lord, Lord as long as I live. I will, I will sing, sing praises, praises to my God I have been. Put not your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. Their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets the pres prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. And upholds the widow and the orphan. But the Lord brings the way of the wicked to reign. The Lord will reign forever, your, your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Praise the Lord. seated. 
we are going to have our service of remembrance. The four big candles that are, are on the altar table, each one represents one of our saints who has been a member of our congregation who has gone on. There are folks who will stand and, and read something about that person and then Debbie will light the big candles. After that, you will have the opportunity to say a name of someone in your heart, in your life, that has gone on to glory. And uh, Debbie will light a little candle in that person's honor. The first person is Jackie Sales. Who has that? Do you want, yeah, probably just if you don't mind coming right here. Thank you. Jack Sells joined Gladeville Church in 1951 with Reverend Wiley Neal as pastor and passed away December 20th, 2020. Jack was a good man and one who was very kind to everyone. He would often go visit Hardin and Rachel without notice and for long visits much of the times. But Hardin and Rachel were great hosts and enjoyed talking with him and remembering the past when he was a truck driver and some of his experiences while driving, some of which we cannot discuss in church. <laughs> he loved to talk and show pictures of his grandkids and his children. He was proud of them all. In church, oftentimes after the service, he would have a question on his mind and went ahead to ask Francis Neal or Missy for the answer. Only problem was, as Hardin said, he learned to whisper in a steel mill. <laughs> we are also thankful we had the pleasure of knowing Jack. Okay, we will light a candle for, for Jack Sales. Well, did it come on? I've got another one. Who's your next person? Clara. Clara Blanchard? Yes. Our next saint is Clara Blanchard. Clara Blanchard joined Gladeville Church February 5th, 2009 and passed away July 27, 2020. She was an active member of this church and she sang in the choir. Claire could say some off the wall things during choir practice, which kept them all in laughter. To know Clara was to love her and though she became unable to attend church, she has been greatly missed. We light a candle in Claire Blanchard's memory. Ralph Roop joined Glenville Church May 15, 2005 and passed away March 13, 2021. Ralph transferred from Wesley Memorial in Pulaski to Gladeville after moving to Galax. Ralph was very active in the church, always there for apple butter making and all the other activities that went on in the church. He could always depend on Ralph. He was very easygoing and loved everyone while always wearing a smile on his face. He never said harmful words about anyone and everyone enjoyed hearing him tell about his childhood and his working at the Radford Arsenal. He always made you feel welcome when you went to visit he and Irene. Ralph never complained about whatever Irene or anyone asked him to do. He would just say, well, I'll try, in his slow tone of voice. Ralph had two wonderful children who made sure he was well taken care of until his last days on this earth. Ralph and Irene were two well-loved people who are missed to this day. Thank you. We light a candle in memory of Ralph Ruth. Curtis Kegley is our next memory. This was written by Sharon, and Sharon, thank you for that. Curtis was born in Pulaski, Virginia on April 3rd, 1938. His was an average family. He had two brothers. His mother was a nurse, and his father was an electrician. He attended Pulaski High School until his graduation in 1956. He went straight into the Army Reserves right, at, right after high school. From that, he went to barber school. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> now, next, he worked briefly in, the Washington, in Washington, D.C. for the FBI in the fingerprinting department. Upon leaving there, he moved to Galax and worked in the shipping department at Vaughn Bassett Furniture Company. Realizing this was not his calling, 
He went into training at Pulaski Hospital and the University of Virginia, receiving his degree to become an x-ray technician. He remained in this career for 40 years. He loved his work and took great pride in what he did and really had compassion for all of his patients. He met Sharon at the hospital and so in 1976 he married her and instantly became not only a husband but a father to the three children whom he also cherished. His greatest joy in life came a few years later when he became a grandfather to grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and two great-great-grandchildren. He also loved his fur babies and they loved him back, all six of them. He had several hobbies, one of which was collecting chains and crosses, just plain and not expensive, but he loved them and would always say he wasn't going to buy any more until probably he ended up with about a hundred of them. At the top of his loves was, as everyone knows, the Alabama Crimson Tide. I do hope he has met some of the former coaches by now, then he will know that he's in heaven. <laughs> Curtis was raised in the Lutheran Church, but entered the Methodist Church upon moving to Galax. He was the most kind, considerate, and thoughtful man I have ever known, just ask Grace. As much as he is missed on this earth by those of us who loved him, I know he received his reward for living his life as God would have wanted him to. Rest in peace, my love. And we light a candle in memory of Curtis. And two words we always say with Curtis. Roll, Roll Tide. tide. <laughs> We're going to give you the opportunity now just to shout out, not necessarily shout, but say out loud names of people that in your heart have been saints in your life, and Debbie will just start lighting candles. Who else? Keep going. We'll catch up with the lighting. Who else? Who else? Who else? Thank you. Who else? Don Tackler, Greg Tackler, Jay Gray Tackler. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Are there others? Are there others? Are there others?
Are there others? Thank you. Lonzo Taylor, in 1978, wrote this poem that I want to share with you. Thank you, Chi Chi, for getting it for me. It's called In Memory of the Deceased. Although this church was established a hundred years ago, and many former members have left from here below, They've gathered here to hear the word and sing God's praises too. They left us this great heritage, which we must pass on too. One by one they left us when their life's work was done. We must carry on in their place the work they had begun. Their voices have been silenced, their bodies inactive too. We'll no more see them face to face but think of them with Jesus singing, I've been saved by grace. Their toils are past, their work is done, and by their lives were blessed. They fought the fight, the victories won, and entered into rest. And all God's children said, Amen. Thank you. Let's prepare our hearts to go to the Lord in prayer, please. As we take um, just a little silence time, as Michelle just plays a little something and the choir brings us into, into prayer, just breathe God in and breathe out all the things that we have brought with us today. Gracious Heavenly God, we give you thanks for the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, weathered wooden churches or crumbling cement business meeting places, where your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O oh God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and those gnarled with age, holy hands used as wave offerings across the land. We thank you, God, for hard-working saints, whether hard-hatted or steel boot, head rags or aproned, blue-collared or three-piece suited, they left their mark on earth for you, for us, for our children to come. Thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, God. May we learn how to walk wisely from their example of faith, dedication, worship, and love. Today, Lord, you have heard the names of those in our heart that we lift up to you for, for a healing touch, whether it be physical or emotional or spiritual. Lord, we ask you this morning just to, to pour a double portion of your Holy Spirit around those under the sound of my voice. May we come to know you better, to walk in your grace, to love each other, Forgive us, Lord, when we are not the church. Forgive us, Lord, when we aren't the people 
that you have called us to be. May when we profess that we are Christians, truly walk that walk and talk that talk. We ask for comfort. We ask for guidance. We ask for discernment. And we ask for healing. Lord, thank you for loving us enough to send Jesus Christ to the world, to, to walk as we walk, to, to feel the feelings that we feel, who loved us enough to die on the cross for the expiation of our sins and was raised from the dead so we too could have eternal life when we believe. And so now, Lord, we give back to you the prayer you taught us to pray when we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We've come to the time in our service where we give back to God a portion of what he has given to us with our gifts and our tithes and our offerings. If the ushers would please come. stand for the doxology. take these tithes and offerings that have been presented. Bless the giver and the gift. Amen. Do you want to put them over on that table? Our choir has an anthem.
David is our reader this morning. Which and I, I, which I discovered about a minute ago. <laughs> I meant to tell you when I got here. I thought you saw it in the bulletin. But anyway, David is going to be our surprise reader for the morning. And our scripture is Isaiah 26, 1 through 8. Thank you, David, for stepping up. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is a rock eternal. He humbles those who dwell on high. He lays the lofty city low. He levels it to the ground and casts it down to the dust. Feet trample it down, the feet of the oppressed, the footsteps of the poor. The path of the righteous is level. You, the upright one, make the way of the righteous smooth. Yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desire of our hearts. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, this morning, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. As a child growing up, All Saints' Eve carried remnants of my mother's Anglican traditions. It's observed in the United States as Halloween. And today we are celebrating All Saints' Day in worship. And tonight we'll offer trunk and treat for children for Halloween. But this morning we are celebrating All Saints' Eve, All Saints' Day. As children, my sisters and I would, would um, dress up in handmade costumes that my mother made, like all the rest of the kids in the neighborhood. And we went out with our brown paper bags colored with stars and, and cats and witches and moons and jack-o'-lanterns on them. And I didn't know a lot about the next day what it was all about. But I did know that I was named for St. Teresa, so that must have been something. Kind of reminded about this man that I heard about who was talking to his six-year-old granddaughter about All Saints Day. Sarah, he said, I wish you didn't have to go to school tomorrow so you could go to church with Grandma and me. Why are you going to church tomorrow, the child asked. The grandfather said, because it's All Saints Day. Well, we're not saints, she said. We're Lutherans. Now, I won't go into how many Lutherans or Methodists or Presbyterians or saints, but today we're reflecting and remembering the lives of those who have served Christ on earth and now praise him before the eternal throne of God. So by definition, we are all moving towards sainthood. We heard the words of Isaiah that David read to us, and that each day we are to be supposed to be going closer toward our sainthood and to live the life that, that Christ would have us live. God gives the saints victory in the end who live here. So how do we do this thing about moving towards saint sainthood? Well, let's look at Isaiah's song of joy. I would certainly like to think that it's possible for a nation of people, our nation, to get back to being a nation that has faith in God. I pray for us to want the perfect peace that comes to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in the Lord. I pray for God to protect us. It seems as though we are moving away from sainthood rather than closer to it. So I want to talk just a few minutes this morning about putting the brakes onto that. 
You know, we're living longer. We're living the Bible's three score and ten plus. The fastest growing segment of the population in the United States is the 85 and over. And I read this week where 97,000 Americans have lighted 100 candles on their birthday cake. 97,000. And as we consider that, we probably will be living longer. And we must form some holy habits, some good things in our life. Though no matter how old you are, if you haven't started establishing these, you need to do. I read this. that the passing years very, just have very little to do with altering a character, except it intensifies it. So if, if we need to take ourselves in hand now. If you were tight at 40, you might be stingy by the time you get to 70. If you're skeptical at 50, you're going to be cynical at 70. What habits have you formed over the years? Now, I want you to just think about that. Habits about God and, and God's word and the will of God in your life. Habits that say that God is first in our lives. Do you have those habits? Do you have the habits of putting God number one in your life? I heard it said this way. Watch your thoughts because they become words. Watch your words because they become actions. Watch your actions because they become habits. Watch your habits because they become character. And watch your character because it becomes your destiny. The goal of those who are working towards sainthood is to fashion holy habits. Break the ones that are controlling your life now. Work on establishing habits of love and tolerance and patience and faithfulness and right living. Examine your own heart and see if the habits that you have will take you where you want to go. The past few years, couple of years, have really forced us to change our traditions and that that's the way we have always done it in our lives, our personal lives and also in the, in the life of the church too. And there were traditions that needed to be changed from our traditions to what God's traditions are. Sometimes our Habits need to be more holy habits. Watch how you speak. Watch what you say. Watch what you do. Watch who you love. Watch where you go. Sometimes these habits that we just kind of let come out need to be changed to holy habits. When we allow God to shape our tradition and habits, we can pass that final test of sainthood. And that's where our lives gradually become fashioned after that of Christ. You heard about the saints that we are honoring this morning. You have heard who they were, what they left, their legacy to not just this church, but to the world. I want to close this morning with a story that uh, Tony Campolo tells about a drunk who was miraculously converted at a Bowery mission. Prior to this drunk's conversion, his name was Joe, he had the reputation of being hopeless, a dirty wino from whom there was no hope, only a miserable existence in the ghetto. But God got a hold of Joe, 
And after his conversion, Job claimed this new life with God. Everything changed. Job became the most caring person that anyone associated with the mission had ever known. Job spent his days and nights hanging out at the mission, doing whatever needed to be done. There was never a task that was too lowly for Job to do. There was never anything that he was asked to do that he considered beneath him. Whether it was cleaning up the vomit from some violently sick alcoholic or scrubbing the toilets, Joe did whatever he was asked to do with a smile on his face and seemed, seemed to be just grateful for the opportunity to help and to serve. He could be counted on to feed those feeble men who wandered into the mission off the street. And every night, the director of the mission would, would gather the men together and he delivered his evening evangelistic message to the usual crowd of still and sullen men who just hung there with drooped heads. But this night, there was one man who looked up after the message was finished and he came down the aisle to the altar and he kneeled to pray and he was crying out to God to change him, to help him change, to forgive him. And the repentant drunk kept hollering, Oh God, make me like Joe, make me like Joe. Oh Lord, just make me like Joe. And the director of the mission leaned down to him and he said to the man, Son, I think it would be better if you prayed, make me like Jesus. And the man looked up at the director with these quizzical eyes and he said, is Jesus like Joe? Well, that's it, isn't it? That's what being a saint is all about. It's living so much like Jesus that people don't know where Jesus begins and, and, and we are left off or where he begins and we leave off. And that's what All Saints Day is about. It's a day of celebration for those who have lived the life of faith before us and are now surrounded by the throne in praise. So you've got to ask yourself this morning, where on the road of sainthood are you? Let's pray. Lord, Make us like Jesus. Make us act like Job. Let us be so transparent that people can see Jesus through us. Forgive our sins. Help us to repent when we are not the people that you have called us to get to be. And help us to move towards sainthood. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of sending forth is Shall We Gather at the River? It's on page 723, or it also will be on the screen. Please stand as we sing.
benediction go in peace, remembering whose you are and whom you serve, and that God loves you more than the sun and the stars. Amen and amen. Thank you.